In 2011, Nathan started a solo project. From there, it slowly started to evolve into more of a full band thing. It's nice being in a band with my brothers. Uh, growing up, we were beating each other up, and now we're making music together. We were raised in a conservative Christian type home. All we ever heard growing up was gospel music, but somehow the three of us found similar musical interests outside of that. Okay, so it's very exciting to have you guys in here. You have a new album that just came out last fall. As a kid, I remember sneaking a Walkman radio into my bed at night so I could listen to Casey Kasem. We weren't sure when we first started writing together what the exact outcome of that was going to be, but after finishing two songs and recording them, we were pretty happy with the way that they turned out, so we decided to put together a full length. In this drive to Fremont, we've, we've made so many times just when we were, you know, recording this thing, which kind of was a span over a couple of months, but um, definitely some long, long days driving here and then working pretty much all day and night and then making a late drive back and barely getting any sleep, drinking a lot of coffee. Just kind of appreciate, I guess, what we created and hope other people do too. It's the right house. We recorded our full length debut album at Rewire Media Studio, and that's run by Brennan Willis. One thing that makes um, this space unique is, is that um, the limitations of it actually end up you know, being a virtue in what we ended up doing with the record. We had to get pretty creative when we were recording, putting mics in bathrooms, down hallways, trying to get some natural reverb or some delay. We went to great lengths to get an authentic sound. So working with a limited budget, that meant buying a piano on Craigslist, buying an organ at a thrift store, and we even borrowed a Rhodes. Yeah, we're gonna play an hour of lovely tracks and beautiful ballads. Mostly all sad ballads. <laughs> maybe, maybe a rock and roll song, I don't know. It depends if we have time. I remember one day we just sat there and we made the call, are we going to get this thing done or are we, you know, not going to do it? It was something where we just had to give that very last bit of effort to get to get it recorded and put together. There's that moment where everyone that you care about and love is there to support you and you're, you're doing what you love and to be on the stage and look out and see all those faces is just a great experience. It's easy for people to take things for granted, like their health. I don't know that Nathan ever really had a chance to do that. 
it was really difficult seeing him suffer, being in and out of the hospital, and just not knowing what was going to happen. This all took place a few years ago, but I remember one specific instance where Nathan, his girlfriend, and I were talking on the back porch, and he had such a look of defeat. It was a very difficult time, and honestly just seemed like he wanted to give up. But he had these really cool songs, and I felt like there was a purpose to them and for him to play music. So we encouraged him to go out and play, and he got offered this solo acoustic gig in Nashville, and I'd heard back afterwards that it went so well and people were into it. And that really was a defining moment for what his music is and what this band is all about. Commitment to music or anything you really love is defined by how you handle adversity. You can either let it destroy you or it can empower you. With Nathan leading the way, we definitely chose the latter. 